Hello and welcome to Pin Zone. I'm Fred Pin, and today I'm going to deviate from my usual content, which is my Forester project car, and I'm going to do some tool maintenance. Now, this particular item I've had for 40 years now. I purchased it when I was about 18, and I'm now 58. So you do the maths and you'll come up with a figure. The tool that I need to service or repair is a Michitoyo dial caliper or vernier and the, the lens on the, the dial is cracked. I actually just cracked this recently, um, probably only a couple months ago and I discovered you can still buy the, the lens or it's called a crystal also. The cracked lens doesn't affect the operation of the, the verniers, I can still use them. It's just one of those cosmetic things that I wanted to rectify and for five dollars plus postage I thought it was uh, reasonable to keep it looking in good condition. And replacing the, the lens on the dial keeps it clearer to read the, the measurements and it's hopefully good for another 40 years. I remember paying $50 for these 40 years ago and in today's terms you'd think that would mean that'd be hundreds of dollars. But you can still purchase these Michitoyo dial calipers for about maybe a couple hundred dollars, $250 and I've seen used ones in a similar vintage selling for about $130, $150 they're a very good quality tool, they're ground and precise and you can measure things. So I'm going to attempt to replace the, the lens and there's just a, a few simple tools that I need. The only complicated part is I have to uh, press the, the lens so that it concaves a bit more. Anyway, I'll show you that. It's a bit, uh, a little bit fiddly maybe, but it's worth a try. It saves me sending it to uh, an instrument repairer to have the, the lens fitted. So, let's get into it. The first thing I'm going to do is take the, the bezel locking mechanism off. Because this bezel here needs to lift off. You can see the crack in the, the lens. It's also referred to as a crystal. So I'm just going to take this part off. This rotates so you can zero or set a different measurement. Just going to use a jeweler's screwdriver under the bezel and lift it off. Just try and take it off evenly. Like so. This is the, the face, which I'll leave there, because you'd have to take off the, the needle. There's the replacement lens that will go into the bezel. The replacement lens also has a slight concave but the, the lens installed in the bezel is more pronounced and that's because I have to press it in and as it fits into the, the smaller diameter bezel the, the lens pops out a bit further and that's why I have to compress it. So let us attempt to do that. I'll just push the, the cracked lens out. I'm not too fussed about that now but to reinstall the, the new lens we'll just press it and hopefully it'll go into shape. With the, the damaged lens I'm just going to push it out, it just pops out. So there's a, a ridge that the, the new lens will fit into on the bezel. As it is the, the new lens won't fit inside the bezel it has to be basically distorted a little bit to, to fit inside. This is the clamp I'm going to utilise. It's just a 
clamp I use for holding together timber or gluing items and I'm going to use it as a press by using just a, an end cap, PVC end cap and a uh, it's a washer, it's a tap washer and hopefully the tap washer will be pushing in the centre of the, the lens distorting it as it presses against the the end cap and I'll just slip the, the bezel over it easier said than done but let's try that as you can see I've changed the the, the smaller valve seat to a one with a stem already on there uh, I need to give me a bit more room to manipulate the, the bezel um, so let us attempt to distort this enough to fit the bezel and it's another case of you need more hands than I have but the principle is there okay with much fiddling and fumbling I have managed to compress that and I think it is just sitting inside the the bezel now so I'm going to release the pressure and hopefully the the lens will stay in the bezel it feels like it's sitting in there as I turn it and the proof will be in the pudding so as I hold that and release this Watch out for the explosion. Yes, we have success. I think all I have to do is push it in slightly. And I am impressed with that. That has worked and I just need to reassemble. Here is the replaced lens looking a lot clearer than previous after 40 years of use there's probably a lot of fine scratches in there that did affect the optics a bit but I'm glad with the result one thing I'm not sure about is why this dial this face is in my view upside down I would have thought that orientation would have been well, I should say that orientation would have been more correct except the zero is uh, opposite the the needle but that doesn't matter it doesn't affect the function I just zero the the dial there when the the faces are closed and there we have it so thank you for watching and we'll get back to some more Subaru content in later episodes